Greetings. I am the one known as John J. Rance. You know that because it's written here. And I'm gonna go over all of these. Um, so this band camp page has 16 stuff on it. 13 of them are albums, but 3 of them are singles. These. But uh, this one's gonna be gone soon, because I'm gonna put this in a feature album. So I made 13 albums in the span of, when was this? October of 2016, so for 4 years and 2 months. No, it's 4 months. Math! <laughs> <laughs> um, I've made 13 albums. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's more than, that, that's above average, I would say. So, uh, you're gonna go o over all of them. Oh, do you want, do you want the deets? These are the deets. Um, these are the, uh, so these are the singles that are now uh, in private mode. There are, there's a, there's a function in Bandcamp where you can put the singles in a, released album but i didn't know that was a thing when i made these so now they're stuck in purgatory but you can listen to all of these um in in in, in these albums and uh, these are the albums i'm working on you could you could you can you can expect to listen to them or hopefully you you will be able to listen to them in 2021 except for this one this one's taking a while um so that that was the there was the deets scandalous uh now we are gonna get actually we, we can't even get to the first album because there's uh, there are albums there are music that's even older than these um so if you go to go to my soundcloud here i have five soundcloud accounts because if you make a soundcloud account they give you three hours of free <laughs> sound music um time until they tell you to buy this pro fucking account thing which I'm never gonna do that sound card. Fuck you. So I just made new accounts. You just need more emails and they let you make another account. So um so if you go here, these are all the music I made and these are not even in album. So if SoundCloud goes under, which to be honest seems pretty likely in the future, um these are all gone. So download them while you can. You can download all of them. Archive them while you can, but for now, these are so old that my Lambda logo has a white background. <laughs> so these are like the very first songs I've ever made. Um, some of, some of them are unreleased, but these are mostly in the order of that I made them. I put most of the songs that I made in this time on this SoundCloud account. Um, this is this is the deepest cut. This is deep cuts among deep cuts. Um. This is called Your Very First Moment, but it's actually not my first song. This is my second song. So this is five years ago. Five years ago, I started making music in uh, December of 2015. Listen to this. Just listen to this. <laughs> listen to this. What the fuck is happening? What the fuck? I'm I mean these are fun to listen to. I mean listen to some of this. Oh this is Jaji. What's weird? Eight people have uh, listened to this. So this these are like these are the deepest cuts, you know. This, like, barely anyone has ever heard these this stuff, but I keep all of them here. Uh, it's for historical purposes, you know. I don't delete anything. Uh, the stuff I have deleted off of the internet is stuff that uh, I just store from other people. So, like, my YouTube channel used to have, like, these uploads of um, anime openings. Now they're gone because it's just all the people's stuff. They, they, they have copyright claims on them anyway. Um, what the fuck is this? Oh, yeah. What is this? Oh, this beat. The beat though. The beat though. This is really fun to listen to, you know. I oh, this flute solo though. Oh, the drop. The drop. I mean, I had something special going on here. I mean, <laughs> there's something charming about these. I had so much fun making these, man. I was having the fucking time of my life doing these. 
making these bullshit songs. I I, I remember there was one that I really liked. Um, maybe. I can't remember. So now it's, you, you can see that there are like Homestuck remixes. Homestuck remixes. Holy shit. This is like uh, me trying to do Flowish theme. Whoa. Groovy. Oh, it, it, then, then it gets terrible. <laughs> Oh shit. This is apparently incomplete even though it sounds the same as anything everything else. So these are all the uh all the songs you can listen to on the SoundCloud account. You can just go here and listen to all of these. This is this is crazy. And there are even like unfinished, unreleased albums. I mean they're released because you can just go go here and uh you can go to this playlist and there's space warp. Um and this is like a Homestuck fan comic that I was gonna make. Or I guess I never really intended on actually making it. I just have had songs in my head. So I made these. I mean, these are like 18 songs, 30, 30 minutes. This is like barely like an album. You know, I just put them in the order that I made, made them. Um, well, some of these, some of these are okay. Like, I, I, I like this one. Like, this is the bridge that gaps. This is the bridge that gaps, uh, Basement Tail and Ryan Jolene, you know. I'm, I was kind of actually getting good at competition at this point. Except for that fucking organ. Okay, let's actually, speaking of, you know, Ryan Jolene and Basement Tail, let's get to the albums. Let's get to the albums. So there's Basement Tail. <laughs> this is like the best cover art. In, in any of the albums that I, I have. <laughs> um, so in order to listen to Basement, Basement Tail, you actually have to go to coolandnewwebcomic.bandcamp.com coolandnewwebcomic.bandcamp.com um, So this is like an Undertale album I made, I guess. This is, I, I, I wanted to do this for the, um, the first year anniversary of Undertale. At the time, Undertale was only one year old. What the fuck? I'm old! I was literally 14. Um, but I guess I was one month late. Um, this is just fucking on the tail. Like, this is like terrible. Like, just listen to some of these. Like, like what am I listening to? Like, <laughs> um, there's one song I actually like in here. So, like, the discordancy in these songs, like, or, or discordance. Um, the thing is, I like knew, I think I knew music theory. I knew chord and, and harmonies. I just wanted to do like the exact opposite of what anyone would want to do because I, that's what I consider fun. So I had so much fun making these songs, but like they sound terrible. Like they don't sound discorded in like an interesting way. Except for this song. I think this song actually sounds interesting. I actually think like the, the piano melody in here is like, it can like it, it jumps around the scales in like a more interesting way than the other ones. So even in these songs, I think you can like tell like there's something going on here. Like I'm I'm there's like a musical repertoire being developed. But the thing is like. I guess we'll have to go over the current new music team thing. Like, this is like a Homestuck, uh, fan music team that I, I was in. Uh, <laughs> and we made so many albums, dude. <laughs> and if you go to, uh, this is my personal favorite, the very first one we made. Um, these are some songs by me. Um, this is like the song I made. This melody is actually kind of low-key catchy. This, this is another song I made. Yeah. This fucking... <laughs> this fun cat song! What the fuck?
Meow. <laughs> That's actually incredibly genius sound design. The guitar chords in the background. <laughs> uh, these are good. Um, I think this is genuinely like one of the funniest albums you can listen to. Like this is, this is like hilarity in music form. <laughs> I think these songs are really good. Um, so I made a bunch of music with these guys. Um, this is another significant one where I made a bunch of songs. Um, then I did Basement Tale. This is, this, this song, this album has arguably my most famous song ever. This is, which is this one. That's the uh, riff from X Gun Give It To Ya. <laughs> so these actually sound okay because, uh, these are just other people's song that I took and I just put them over a chord progression, which like, I mean that's bound to sound good. Um, <laughs> so I made all of these. I had so much fun making these songs with these guys. This is like the most fondest memories I have making music in my entire life. Around this time, um, I start I kind of stopped, mostly because I was making rain, which I dropped here. Then the rain dropped. Anyway, we now move to Syndrome, which, uh, so you know how people say you can't delete anything off the internet, nothing, you can't remove anything from the internet, like, permanently? So if you, if you, go, if you go here, my rating music page, it, it says that this album was originally called Ransom Syndrome, JTR Sound Test, <laughs> which is a dumb name, so I changed it sometime this year. Um. It's a reference, I guess, or a play on words to this album called Stockholm Syndrome by Robert J. Lake, who was part of the Homestone music team. And, uh, th there was just an album where he compiled all the music he made. Um, and this is all the music I made in, like, this four, four month time period. And, like, there are 50 songs on it, or you can call it songs, but most of them are barely, like, songs, so, 50 musical ideas, I mean, that's pretty good, I can't even do a quarter of that nowadays. Um, so this is a pretty good uh, write-up. Uh, polished and finished them as best I could. <laughs> good joke. So the only, like, song here, and the only thing that I kind of remember is, uh, this F song. Press F. So this melody is actually okay. I mean, if I was hired to like do like a video game RPG soundtrack, you know, I I would use this as the boss battle theme. These 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 are just songs you can listen to, like just listen to pets, like an hour of me fucking around with sound fonts. This is like, we are, we are nearing the end of the Discord and MIDI sound font era. Um, oh shit. Now we go to Ryan Jolene, which from this point on, you know, again, Bass Orb is kind of the bridge that gaps Basement Tail and Ryan Jolene because there's like a significant improvement in composition ability with this album. Like these albums have these songs have chords, they have harmonies, they have melodies that stay in scale. Like this is a straight up just a pop rock song that I made. <laughs> um, and these are actually good. I mean, you sound like an anime soundtrack. I actually like this one. And the melodies stay in key, the chords align with the notes of the melody, what a novel concept! I like this one. This is like a funny anime hijink shenanigans theme song. <laughs> like, I, I uh, at this point, I was actually getting a, a hang of writing 
songs and not just a bunch of notes in a bunch of random order, you know? And even this song is technically like, in terms of concept, you know, these, these are actually aligned, um, in a thoughtful order. So this is, the, this is a soundtrack for a comic that I wanted to make. This one actually I did want to make, unlike Base Warp. Um, but I never got around to it. Maybe I'll make it in the future. Um, so what I like about this album is that the songs are actually sequenced and arranged in an order that makes sense if you think about it. So these are the introductory songs, you know, cat theme songs. It, this is Jesse's theme, which is, I guess, like the villain of this story or something. I don't actually, I don't actually have a lot of the characters really developed, but this is actually a good song. Again, the melodies are tight in this one. The melodies are worth revisiting. And I might even <laughs> use some of them, you know? So this detective song is supposed to be like a... I guess like a flashback song. Because Jesse and Ryan were friends, I guess. And then there's the bo this boss battle theme, which is just my love letter to the Lisa soundtrack. Because the thing is, like, Lisa and Undertale are the reason why I... Why I started making music. Um, I played Lisa. It was the best thing ever. It's still the best thing. Lisa is still my be favorite game story thing in general. Like, nothing has stopped Lisa for me. But, uh, I learned that Lisa, the Lisa soundtrack was made in a demo trial version of FS Studio. I was like, wow, that's, that's so good. Like, this music is so good. Like, how did this guy make it in a free thing, you know? So uh, I downloaded FS Studio, the, the demo version, and I just never got around to really playing around with it until I played Undertale and learned that Undertale was made in the exact same software. I was like, wow, this software that's just sitting in my computer, it can make music like this, you know? Like, with Lisa, I could buy that Dinkling made all the songs in, in just the uh, so software because, like, it, it sounds amateurish. It sounds cheap, even though it's incre incredible. Um, you, you can, t anyone can tell that the Lisa, music in Lisa sounds like, uh, like a, almost like a first time in, in my music, music made it. But Undertale, Undertale sounds like, even though Undertale still sounds pretty amateurish, it sounds so intricate. The arrangement and, and the melodies and the light motifs, you know, it's so, like, it feels immaculate. Um, I was, I was just in awe of it, about how that it was made in the same software. So I, I wanted to try it out. I, want, I was like, I can do this too. Because all my life I've been told that, you know, I couldn't make music because I wasn't talented enough or I can't play instruments or I can't sing, you know. Um, I always wanted to write songs and ma make music. I just, I, was, I just thought I couldn't do it because something people like me couldn't do. Which was a lie, of, lie of course. <laughs> so I started just doing it. Um... So at this point, I've been making music for like one year, and this is the result, you know? This is just me trying to do Lisa music. This is like... This is me trying to do Men's Hair Club. To, to get back to the story, there's this Ace Attorney Reminiscence uh, track. Then there's this Alliance track where I guess our friends try to find powerful allies. And this By Friends song has the same motif from Hannah's theme. So we, I guess this this character dies here or something. Like, you, you can figure this, this out if you just listen to these songs, which I think, oh, oh, cool. No one's ever, ever talked about this album, though. I'm, I'm, I don't know a single person who, like, looked into this album's musical storytelling. So this is why I'm just telling you this here. Um, Then there's this interlude track. Then there's this for Epic Boss Battle Theme. This is like the most epic sounding thing I've ever made. Oh, the fucking rock guitar drop! Oh yeah! Rock out! I'm headbanging right now. It's incredible, the fucking... The choirs, the church organs. <laughs> I really was onto something here. Um, then I guess in this song... um, In this song, like, the battle is over and... I guess they made up. And now they, all, all the characters have to combine their abilities and 
escape this facility because it's set to self-destruct or something. I don't, I don't fucking remember. Um, then there's the end credits medley. Um, then there's this piano song. It actually sounds okay, even though it, this is a sound font. I like this main motif that I came up with. And there's the epilogue song. Called Meanwhile because, uh, the final episode of Futurama is called Meanwhile. I just thought that sounded cool. Uh, so in this song, you can hear the motifs of Lila's theme and Jesse's theme. So I guess those are the two characters that survived. I mean, I mean, I don't really remember, but I remember, you know, put, putting those motifs in to convey that, those points. So I guess that's like, that's something ha that happened. I don't really, I don't really remember the story, but I do like that just listening to the songs, the motifs help you clue in into what's going on in the songs. I think this is probably the closest I get to like instrumental storytelling in music because now I make concept albums with, you know, dial dialogue and shit. That's Lion Jolene. I had to check the minutes. We've been going for 20 minutes. Incredible. Uh, now we get to, we get to, we get to the real, uh, start. We, we, we've only gotten just started. Like, we're, we are three albums in, but we only got to start it with Discordant. This is my spiritual debut album. This is the, uh, this is the album where I go feral. This is where I go mask off, mask off, you know? Um, because all this time I've been trying to make this, Faux video game music bullshit, like RPG game music, like Homestuck music, which is not something I wanted to make. Um, I wanted to make fucking rock music and pop music, um, because that's what I grew up listening to. I didn't fucking li grow up listening to video game soundtracks. What the fuck? <laughs> um, but I thought like you know, um, since Toby Fox and people like that made these this kind of music in FS Studio, I thought that's what I had to do. Which is funny because FS Studio is generally associated with like hip-hop producers or edm producers but i thought that's just what i had to do and i want that's what that's the sound that i want had to master but at this point i just said fuck it i want to make the music that i want to make which is i wanted to be a rock star you know so i i, I made these songs this is a quote from uh from nichito a cockroach says this I wanted to link the link that clip um here but uh that clip got taken down from YouTube. So that's your homework. You have to go watch every episode of Nichito to find the episode where this quote comes in. <laughs> uh I did the thing. This is the album where I uh, I was like, let's make an album. With, even with Ryan Jolene was I was still like trying to make like a soundtrack, you know, a fake soundtrack. But this is the first time I wanted to make an album, you know? Um, this is why I consider it my first album. So, like, these songs, these are, these are just pop, indie pop songs, you know? Here we go again. Where's the, uh, where's the piano solo? Oh, yeah. That fucking chord! <laughs> oh, yeah, this is, this is... I had so much fun making these songs. Like, I, I, I was having the time of my life, like... I had a lot of fun on, um, I, I had a lot of fun making those songs with the Korean New Music Team guys. Um, you know, blessings, blessings to them. I wouldn't be here without making those tracks. But that's not what I wanted to do. I wanted to make pop songs. So I, I just went to mask off and like every day I came from school and wrote these lyrics and recorded these vocals and it was so fun. And these are like, you know, like the snippet from pop music that I've heard over the years. Um this is like this is one is this one is straight up pop punk song. Um this one like has some weird modulation going is on. This the end of the load for me? I ha I make no no attempt. No attempt to stay on key. And it's almost charming. It's almost charming. Not actually charming, but almost. Um this song is like me trying to do a can't stop by red hot chili peppers. This one is like I actually really like this song. Fifteen years of man. 
15 years, man. And it's, it's, it's a great melody. These are catchy pop songs. And like, I, I nailed it, you know? I almost nailed it on the first go. Like, this is my first time trying to write uh, a ly- 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 lyrical pop rock songs. And I got it like on the, on my first tries. Except for the fact that I can't sing for, can't sing for sweat. I mean, these are pr- catchy written pop tracks. Um, this is like my first attempt at trying to do some pop. How I love you so. Sen solo. Um, which I guess my Sen pop sound is my signature trademark sound, I guess, because that's what I did on Unpop, and I guess that's the thing I'm the best at. Um, so this is Proto Unpop, Proto Rain. Um, this song is like, me trying to do Green Day American Idiot. The fucking MIDI guitar sounds so bad. Um, I'm go- I'm doing a, a a remake of this track, Tsundere. Because again, like the compositions are fine. I actually like how how these songs are written. Oh, by the way, this song, this album is the only one that comes with like bonus instrumental tracks if you download it. And that might be a better experience, which is, which might be why I put them here. Yeah. So that's, uh, that's discordant. Very fun. Very fun. This is actually not a square image. <laughs> this cover art. <laughs> actually, let's look at this, this, this. What's this task bar? There's Undertale. There's LP Studio. Paint on that. There's Audacity. I think this is like some sort of 3D model. It's U-Torrent fucking piece of shit garbage. Um, there's two chromes? <laughs> <laughs> let's, 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 let's move on. Let's move on. To rain. Oh shit. I need to, <laughs> I need to fucking drink something before talking about rain. We go back to new Bandcamp. Kurenyumusicbandcamp.com dot from you can go to Kurenyu Music Kurenyuwebcomic.bandcamp.com to listen to all of these albums, including Rain. Rain I, I, I'm this is a complicated to the album. Um if you want to know what I thought about this album at the time, you can l- read this booklet, this fucking long ass booklet where I just talk about everything. Um so I don't really have m- much more to add on to this. Rain is my magnum opus. This is my, this is the statement that I made. I think it was no- Noah Gallagher who said, like, every song I've written since Live Forever and, uh, Sampain Supernova are just me trying to write those songs over and over again. Like, the points made on those songs. I'm just regurgitating those points. And, uh, and that, that's how I feel with Rain. Every album I've made since Rain is me regurgitating the themes stated on Rain. I mean, this is everything. This is everything. It has themes about the internet. It has themes about, you know, art, about making art, the creative process. It has themes about love. It has themes about being fucking gay or shit. Um, though I didn't really realize that, you know. At the time, I, at the time I wrote these songs, I was, I didn't even know that I was not a boy. Wow. <laughs> what a, how fucking gay. <laughs> you know? And it was themes about society, even though I wasn't a communist yet. Um, it still talks about how we live in a society. I mean, these are, these, these songs are my everything. These songs have everything that I ever want to say in a piece of art. Um, this is what, what makes it my opus, but it's so difficult to recommend it to people because it's so hard to listen to. It's also so fucking long, which is why I'm considering doing a remake of this album. Not just a remaster, just from scratch. I want to make, make these tracks again, keep all the melodies and the chords and the lyrics, but just do all the sounds, do all the synths and the drums and mixing and recording. Oh, from scratch. I want to do that and also cut down the fucking track list by half because this like, this Bulgarian choir music song is probably like borderline fucking borderline racist. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> I want you, 
I want to tell you to go re- listen to Rain because you are not a true John J. Rance fan until you have listened to Rain. Like this is okay. This is m- the album I made. This is my fucking twin fantasy. You know, this is uh. <laughs> If Rain is my um, Rain is my blue album, and the uh, antagonist is my Pinkerton. <laughs> uh, we're gonna talk about antagonist more. Uh, so that's Rain, I guess. Oh yeah. So I guess I like talk about how how I made made this album. Uh, so there's like a big break, you know, big, big hiatus between Discordant and Rain. I made, I made Discordant in like, uh, I released it on April, but I made it like throughout March. So after I re- released Discordant, I basically right, went right into making Rain. And as for the technical, like, specifics of how I wrote, wrote these songs and how this project came to be. I, I talk about all of them in the book that, but I wrote all of these songs on May of 2017. And for like the next 10 months, 10, 11 months, Rain is all I made. Like this is the most time I've ever spent on a project. Like, like straight up, like with no breaks. Every day I came from home and, you know, I came from school to home and, and like I would mix these tracks and record these vocals. I recorded fucking dozens of takes for each song. Like, holy shit. But like, I do, I, I was still so new at this making pop music thing that like, if these vocal tracks are like, recorded in stereo, <laughs> so some of them have weird panning, because, <laughs> like they, because they aren't in mono, which <laughs> is what you used to do. <laughs> but like, this is the most time I've spent on anything, really, because like, for example, Color is Dead, um, I, I wrote, a lot of the songs in 2018, but I only put it out in July of this year. But like, there was a big, like, just time in between where I just didn't work on it at all, like, because I wanted to make Unpop instead. Um, basically, like, in around, like, l- it was late 2018, I had some songs written for Color, This, That, and Unpop. Where Unpop started becoming, coming to be on early 2019, but mid 2019, in, Mid 2019, I uh, started making this summer heartbreak. So once I was done with summer heartbreak, it was, and it was September, I had to choose between colors, color this that or unpop, and I chose unpop, and that's what I decided to release at the end of that year. And then I went back to color this that in 2020. So really, um, I only worked on color this that for like three, four months. With 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 rain, it was like ten consecutive months of me just doing nothing. But make rain. That was n- there's nothing else in my life. So if you ask me what I did in 2017, I couldn't tell you. I don't fucking remember anything from 2017 because I was just making these songs. I don't fucking remember. <laughs> um, that's rain. Let's go to seasons. 2018 is the um the year where I released the most music, I think. I released, like, four albums. This was right after Rain. A bunch of songs that I wrote while working on Rain, you know. Rain took so, so lo- such a long time to produce that I basically wrote an entire album while pr- during the length that it took to producing Rain. Um, these songs are really weird. Uh, this, uh, <laughs> this one song... Has has uh technically has a tactical N word in it. <laughs> uh, this is like a bunch of slurs, but it's actually a song about how you shouldn't say slurs. Wow, genius, genius, sixteen year old John Jerrans. What the fuck were you thinking? Holy shit! Um, <laughs> one day someone's gonna call this out, and I'm gonna have to either delete it or I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna get cancelled. But I mean, I would fucking cancel 2018 me, that piece of shit, cunt, punk ass bitch. <laughs> I would f- cancel the fuck out of 16 year old me. So I, I have no problems with that. <laughs> but these songs, I mean, this is more, more of me, uh, kind of trying to solidify my musical style, I guess. Um, Jackie here, which, is my friend, uh, Really likes this album, and he really likes the song "IDK" because it sounds like Sensei Kamatsu. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> so there's at least a few people who actually like this album, which can the same cannot be said about Discordant. <laughs> uh, so I guess that's that's at least a thing. Oh, this is a song about being trans, and I didn't didn't know it. I at the time I did not identify as trans. So a bunch of trans people um in the Korean music team. I, I don't want to talk about this. I don't want to talk about drama. Okay, it's just, just to put it simply, like, a bunch of trans people, like, listened to this album and thought that I was, like, speaking over trans people. They thought I was, like, a cis guy who was writing about trans, trans people, and they just didn't like that. When, now, looking back, this is clearly just me trying to talk about me not being a guy. Just, and it was... Like, at the time, I didn't want to say that I was trans because I didn't want to fucking out myself. So I said that I was just trying to, you know, explore these themes. You know, it's a fictional song. But now, looking back, it's clearly this, this song is just about me being trans. Like, so it's, it's a little, it was a little funny how these people jumped on that fact, on the fact that I was just, I was a cis guy writing a song about being trans. Turns out I wasn't fucking cis, you fucking punk ass bitches <laughs> you fucking cunts you twat haha <laughs> 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 jokes on you <sighs> yeah it wasn't until like 2019 when i was like fully you know um knew that i was non-binary and also bipolar and also depressed as shit and a fucking communist this this Arkelele album is just I went to a government funded you know trip to the Arkelele, based based Korea, South Korean government. I made these songs. I actually like this. Uh, I actually like this track. Yeah, it's it's fun. Like it, this this album has some. Um, cool, interesting production ideas in it. Uh, and I, I know at least one person who says this last song is, um, their favorite song from me. So I, I'm glad, like, I'm, I'm just glad that, like, I've made so many albums and, like, at least all of them, like, have, like, at least one or two people who tell me, like, this has a, a song in it that is their fav, one of their favorite songs. That cannot be said about antagonists. I've never seen anyone. I've never heard anyone say that they like antagonists. Um, this is a very complicated album. I still don't know how to talk about this one. I don't know. I don't know how to talk about antagonists. This is the only album I where I where I uh, only album I ever made where I talk about my personal life. You know, um. Or at least like the like events that happened in my past, uh, which is I guess it doesn't really make me uncomfortable. It's kind of weird. Like if this is again, this is my Pinkerton. You know, this is my Weezer Pinkerton, and uh, I still don't know how to feel about it. I made these uh kind of vlog music video uh, where I kind of talk talk more in depth about where I can explain some of the uh events depicted in these li lyric lyrics i don't have any intentions of doing that anymore like i don't have any intentions of getting as personal as i i did in these videos you can watch them if you want on if you can make out what the fuck i'm saying you know but uh this one truth to chaos uh, tra song is actually pretty good it's this like the music in this is like me trying to do fathers on misty actually the uh the outro of this song. Tonight, hey! hey. 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 <laughs> the sex solo is actually awesome. Um, by the way, the Bandcamp player is so deep. So shit by default that I need needed to uh, install a Chrome door party plugin so it has a fucking volume slider like the primary function of your website is listening to music and your player doesn't have a volume mixer what the fuck is wrong with you anyway um the this album is just uh, it's painful for me to listen to 
because it's filled, filled with esoteric re- references to just stuff that no one would ever be able to get in. They will never be able to get in. I'm not going to explain it. But, uh, yeah. This, this one is a doozy. And again, I don't, I don't know if anyone likes this album. So if you, if you want to listen to this album and if you, if you actually like it, tell me what you, what the fuck you like about it. <laughs> uh, that's Antagonist. That was the last, that was the final album of 2018. Holy shit. We only have like seven left and we only 40 minutes in. We might actually be able to get this video under an hour. So. At the beginning of 2019, I put up these two singles. So this, this song, I made an album. This, these are some more deeds, uh, more deeds, more John J. Lance lore. But this was part of a cut album and an unfinished album called the Orange Album or my self-titled album called John J. Lance, where it was gonna be ant- like antagonist, you know, it had four acts was this epic rock opera sprawling and following my entire life up, up until this point um you know i made an album was part of it you know this this was the part in the album where where i was talking about my me starting to make music the beaters the needers the midders the peepers i mean this is a pretty fun song <laughs> That's I made an album, and then I put out 2009, and certain people have told me that this is my best song yet, and this is another album where I have trouble with it, like, uh, so this is like Antagonist, like, this is the last, um, song I've ever made, where, well, last so far, where I talk about my own life. And this is this 14 minute epic fucking Kanye West runaway ass song where I vocal the crew in my way through my relationship with my dad, with my dead father. Um, yeah, that, that's basically it. And you can listen to this song. I think, I, I think, I don't think it's my best song, but I think it's probably what I will be remembered for artistically. Like, John Jarrett as an artist, as a musician, will be remembered for 2009, I think, when future people reevaluate my work. Probably. Like, it, it's, this seems like the kind of song that would get into, like, a Forgotten Gems list, you know, or something like that. But I don't really know how, how to feel about it. So by this point in 2019, I had some songs, you know, from Color This Dead that I have been cooking up since 2018. But in July of 2019, or June of 2019, everything changed because I started making the Summer Heartbreak album. And uh, this this now you can read as a novel. You can li- read it as a novel. And I, I'm going to make an audiobook of this. I'm going to just read the entire thing. But uh, in the book, I, I talk about how I started making this this album. Um... So in the afterward, I kind of go over the, the history of this album. So this, you can just le- read this for this part. But this is like me trying to do Weezer, Shinsei Kamatechan, Yorosika, Supercell, J-Rock kind of vibe. And uh, so this is actually the point when I started gaining fans and followers that weren't from my home st- uh, uh, um, era. So up until, way up until this point, we up until this, like, this point, all the people who listen to my music were here because I used to make Homestuck fan music. But starting with Summer Heartbreak, like, people started following me who didn't even know who I was before. They just stumbled upon this album because someone recommended this to them. So that that's a pretty big change in my career. Um, I would like to one day, like, remaster this um album and like record the guitars to it and actually have it be real guitars like at this point i mastered i mastered the craft of um of doing midi guitars i mean we just listen to the guitar lead on this one a guitarist straight up just asked 
ask me when uh, when they heard the song which what guitar are you using I, and i told them it was, it was a midi sample library called shredded a is, is that how you pronounce it <laughs> that's a midi guitar so at this point i had mastered th- that, that sound like compare this with you know like from this chordant with, with like this I mean, this is all just straight up, just you know, key- keyboards with no automation whatsoever. So that's some heartbreak. Then now we, now now we finally have Unpop, you know, which reached its first one year anniversary very recently. At the time of this recording, that was so uh, three days ago. So uh, Unpop. So I, where do I begin with this one? I kind of knew from the moment I wrote the first song to Unpop, which is, was uh, Post Punk Girlfriend, that I th- I knew that this was going to be like my best album, at least since, since Rain. I still think Rain is like better in terms of themes and statement, but in terms of pure musical like prowess of me sewing off my finesse in production, Unpop is unrivaled. Like, and this is the most positive re- reception I've ever gotten on an album. Like, what, what the fuck, like, 17 people have paid me money. Money. Real United States dollars for this, for having made this album. Unpub is the point when, like, I, I started, again, started getting a ton of people who follow me who just listen to this album, you know? They listen to the album mostly because of this, this, uh, radio me- it, they, it, a lot of people have found it over late new music, and they just listen to this album, and they, and they, and now, now they listen to my music, and that's just incredible to me because I've been making like stuff on the internet, I'm making content, like I've been writing like fan fiction on the internet, putting up fan fiction since I was like fucking six, like, for like ten years, more than ten years, I've been like writing mm-hmm. stuff. You know, and like, or like uploading art or whatever. And nobody ever gave a shit. And, but I still did it because it was fun. Music was just, uh, I, music started just like that, you know? I just started making music because it was fun. I, I mean, this, the SoundCloud plays. I mean, like, nobody, like, eight, eight plays. Like, actually, this actually has a bunch of plays. What the fuck? It's just 61 plays? What the fuck? Some of these actually have some good, 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 uh, with plays, but I mean, it, with these, like, first, very first, uh, very first tracks, like, eight, eight plays, like, barely anyone listened to these. This, this one has four, um, but I put them out because I, I had so much fun just making them. I, had, I was having the time of my life. Um, but the beginning with Unpub, Unpub is like the, the game changer. This was the game changer. This was the, this is the, the album where, like, People start giving a shit. Um, and I still have like, probably like a dozen people who give a shit about the stuff I, I make right now. Right now, there's actually a pretty good positive reception to Prologue to Actualize. But, uh, still, I, I'm like a n- no name, but at least I have like an audience for like more than 10 years. I just, st- I was, I just put stuff out into the void, into the echo chamber where no one looked at it. And I was fine with that. I, I, I thought I would never get an audience, and I was fine with that. But now, like, you are listening to this right now. You're watching this right now. And I never thought that was possible. I, like, if, if there's even one person who's listened to this all the way up until this point, like, I thank you. I, I appreciate your fucking existence because I never thought you would would exist you know i still can't believe that you exist <laughs> maybe that's a weird thing to hear on a youtube video but yeah so i'm really proud of unpop uh i hope uh, i hope a lot more people listen to it i do think this is like has a lot of mass appeal uh this is the album where i i master my pop the unpop the unpop is a thing from uh Bad. I didn't make up the, the term unpopular or unpopular. Uh, that's from the band James Big Ego. You might know because their song Stress is the ending theme to the, to Jim Starling's The Jim Kajusen. That's how I found them. Um, 
And it's just a great, great fucking phrase, unpop for the unpopular. They call themselves unpop. And I mean, if you listen to James Big Eagle, there's just, just, there's just a indie rock, pop rock band. Kind of interesting thing is that they don't have an electric, uh, guitar, an uh, electric ba- bassist. They have a double bassist, which is pretty interesting for a rock band. But except for that, there's just a rock band. But I, I love this, fucking love this phrase, this term unpop to describe my music. And, you know, it also coincides with the, uh, with the term boogie pop, you know, which I, I talk about. This, this, this quote is in my band camp and bio, you know, it's from the author of boogie pop where he, this is him, um, at the, um, the end, at the afterward of boogie pop volume one and book volume two. I'm sorry. At the end of volume two, he, he explains how he came up with the term bo- boogie pop, which is that, you know, he, this this guy Kaduna Kohei, he writes real dad stories, you know, and uh, he is he would submit his, his manuscripts to publishers, and the publishers will always tell them, t- t- tell him like this is a great written story, like this is great literature. We just can't publish it because it's so fucking weird. You have to go to someone else. Like I'm like since you are a great author, I'm sure you'll be able to find someone, but we can't do it. Like we, it, this is too weird for us. So when when you get told that a lot, a lot of people, a lot of you know, niche underground um authors will probably like start having resentment towards pop culture, you know, start calling it you know faux and like shallow and not deep enough, you know. But Kadono, you know, kind of uh, Kohei, he started admiring pop culture. He started started researching pop culture. He started wondering like, what are they doing? What are they doing that I'm I can't do? You know, because since I can't just make a pop story, what what can I take from that? Because Kadono Koi, one of his favorite manga of all time is Jojo's Bizarre Adventure, and Jojo's Bizarre Adventure is an insanely popular, insanely monumental um influencer manga series. But it's called Jojo's Bizarro Adventure. It's weird as fuck. There's something about Jojo that is so eccentric and nothing like anything else, but still pulls in this mainstream audience. Jojo is so popular, but like, it's so weird. It's, it's perfect that an author of, of the series of Boogie Bob loves Jojo's Bizarro Adventure. I'm sure he started reading Jojo because it's like, it's so unique and charming and, and you know, boogie is what it, what it calls it. Um, but there's some, there's a pop appeal to it. There's a mainstream appeal that pulls in a lot of people. And there's like a, there's a difference between Jojo's Bizarre Adventure and like Junji Ito manga. You know, Junji Ito manga is like, completely out there. There's no pop appeal whatsoever. Joseph's Bizarre Adventure still is like a shonen story at its heart. It's a story about friendship and the human nature to strive and like and keep surviving <laughs> and shit like that, you know, it's like, like shonen shit. Um, and it's but it's also about a bunch of fucking wacky yeah, hijinks. So th- that, that's kind of what Kodan uh, Koei thought of. Boogie pop, you know, he would combine his boogie real knee sensibilities with the pop culture that he's studied and admired. And that's my attempt at, of doing that is unpop. It's me trying to put together all the pop music I've uh, listened to over the years, but arrange it and, um, produce it in a way where it's distinctly me. It's distinctly John J. Rance. In a, in a way, Unpop is the most John J. Rance album you are ever gonna get. This is a culmination of all the pop music that I, I love listening to. Uh, and it's also about a bunch of lesbians and being Antifa and <laughs> forming a workers union or, or something like that. Um, it, it, it really resonated with a lot of people. I'm so glad for that. You know, like people, some people have literally told me that this album has changed their life. You know, this album made, help them realize that they were like, um, transgender or whatever. Like, even though there isn't really a lot of trans themes in this, um, I mean, it, it has that aesthetic to it. So it, it helped, it helped them get through a tough time. And I was like, wow. 
I can do that. Something I made did that. It's 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 incredible to me. Unpopularly, it, um, it just belongs in a special place for me. And I I probably talked about this boogie pop thing before in another thing. I just said the same things again. Again, like everything I'm making is I'm just trying to say the same. I'm regurgitating the same points. <laughs> so that's 2019. So at the beginning of 2020, if you don't if you don't know about it, if you are an alien or someone from the future, um, in, in, at the beginning of 2020, we were hit with this global pandemic. So I we stopped going to school. So I was like, oh shit, I'm I'm not going to school for like two weeks. Turns out it was gonna be like four months. But at the time, I thought it was only gonna be two weeks. So I was like, oh shit, I have to do something. I have to make like an make 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 a bunch of music. I have to seize the moment. So I just started making covers. And I just started re- releasing these track by track, uh, and I ended up making like twelve, you know, covers in like a span of three weeks. You know, I'm, and uh, I don't even know how I did that, but this is like this is probably proof that I can make an album every month. I'm gonna, again, I'm. Uh, by the way, if you didn't know, I'm gonna make an album every month, and and uh, it's gonna work out. It's totally gonna work out because I made twelve covers in. Three weeks. If I just kind of up my game, I'm sure I can make an album every month. Like, an album doesn't even have to be twelve songs, you know. Um, this is like forty minute minutes of music. Um, each album in in twenty twenty one. On when I make an album, when I do the album, one one thing it's probably gonna be like thirty minutes, like average. So I'm I'm sure I can I can pull it off. Um. So yeah, this is just a bunch of covers I made. This Lemon Demon co- uh, cover, a lot of people like. It's cool. Uh, I'm gonna make Attitude Made. Of, I'm gonna make Attitude Made of Influence too. By the way, for for April 2021, I'm gonna make another covers album. Um, if Attitude Made of Influence was so good, why didn't they make an Attitude Made of Influence too? Well, I'm literally gonna do it. And here's the answer. Okay. Color this dad. I'm, I've made an entire fucking vlog about uh, talking about color this. I, I've already made, I've already spent two hours talking about color this dad. I could talk more about it. Um, someone's told me that this is like my most, most replayable album, which is like an interesting take. Uh, maybe. I mean, these, these are, are like just, this is my attempt at hip hop, which is just not a genre that I li- listen to a lot. So this, like, this is in stark contrast with Unpop. Unpop is me trying to l- m- finally make the kind of album, the kind of song that I've always wanted to make. Um, because even when like, because like, up like starting with the score, I started making pop music, but these still weren't like music that I wanted to make. You know, like Rain is like. Rain has like ten different genres in in there in in itself, and she is like a, a like a indie rock hip. Uh, this is also kind of like a hip hop album, and this is like electronic electronic music. Like I I didn't make like a straight up synth pop album until Unpop. So like synth pop is basically the music I listen to the most at least nowadays. Um, when I was when I was a kid, when I was young, I listened to like punk rock and fucking. Queen and shit like that, but uh, uh, like uh, this is the kind of pop music I've always wanted to make. Like this is me at home. I I finally feel like myself, which cannot be said for fucking these bullshit albums that I made. But so color this that is kind of me trying to lead um uncharted territories. It was an interesting experience. I guess only one thing is left: the soundtrack to Extra. Soundtrack to Extra is technically. A um a 2019 album because I made most of these songs on June to July of 2019. So when I started uh, making prologue to actualize, I guess I should make also make a whole at whole video explaining prologue to actualize too. Um, I might do that. I, actually, I will do that, but I might not have time because um right after I, I make 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 this thing, I probably have to go uh, straight into production of the January album. But uh, the, these are like, these are more like instrument hip hop songs. Like this is like the, around the time when I was, I was like trying to decide whether I should uh, 
make color this that or on pop so i was trying make making some more uh, beats some instrumental hip hop uh, beats so i could rap rap over uh, the songs on color this that so uh, i was kind of playing around with hip- the hip hop sound at this point now i was i also discover how to make future bass so that's how i made lights <laughs> um i don't think you you could like, probably rap over any of these like that 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 too too filled with shit um but yeah, these these are pre- pretty good tracks. I mean, if if you want me to score stuff, if you want me to make a soundtrack for like a video or a movie or or, or like a fucking you know, video game, like listen to this album and this is what I can do. And uh, I can also like do like RPG fucking battle boss battle themes if you if you want that. I I I can I can just like pull pull up one of these and just make them sound better, make, mix them better. That's all the music I made, I guess. Um, I've done something like this before and like, um, the beginning of 2019. Uh, so like almost two years ago now. And, uh, it was like four hours long. I, I didn't even have these albums yet. I, I, I just talked about these and it took me four hours. <laughs> so, uh, this one I think only took like an hour. So that, that's a, that's pretty good. Um, I'm sure I missed a lot of stuff, but I don't really give a shit. Um, so yeah, look forward to album a month twenty twenty one. You're gonna you're gonna get these albums. The deets. Uh yeah. I think that I think I'm done now. Holy shit, my throat hurts. Uh this by the way, this is like the fifth take I had to do of this. Um the first few takes were a way longer too. maybe maybe that uh, that helped. Maybe I before doing that color this that bl- vlog I should have like done some Thompson takes before. That was the take one, that video. <sighs> yeah. Stay happy. <laughs>